Hello, everybody. It has just gone at seven o'clock on Friday night. It's time for the Long Run Show live stream and podcast brought to you by the 40 Runs Running Community and our good friends and sponsors at Sketches. Hello, everybody. I'm Ian Wilkerson. Tonight, we're going to be talking about how you can save a few quid through running in these difficult times. Everybody's feeling the pinch. So hopefully we can come up with some tips and perhaps you'll give us some observations yourself about saving a few quid because we're all up for a bit of that. So Toby's back driving the machine, which is excellent because it's, we're already improved because we've managed to get an intro this week. I might even do the right <laughs> outro as well. We'll see. Let's see how it goes. Ooh. Yeah, but for everybody who's listening to the pod, even everyone, um, start your questions with a cue, all that sort of usual stuff, right? Um, but more importantly, if you're listening to this on the pod, Tobe's got a new desk, which is magnificent news because that means that you're no longer looking at that disaster of an eyesore that was his, what was it, rack of toot that he had yeah. behind him. Um, that half-built so mini bookcase he had. He almost looks semi-professional. It's a podcast. Don't matter what it looks like, does it? He does, Pope. But, Tope, we are, yeah. I don't think I said this is a live stream and podcast. So, oh, yeah. And you've not spelt your name right. <laughs> what? He wrote it backwards. Yeah, he's, totally, no, he's, he's done that in a bit of a hurry, isn't he? But it's yeah. lovely to have him back, isn't it, Chris? Then it eases the burden a bit, mate. You can that, tell you be what, there I, and express yourself, can't you? Yeah, I'll put my hands up. You know, you put me on in times of driving, it, it's going to go wrong. It's your own fault. It's like putting a three-year-old in charge of the TV while you, you know, leave the room. It's the same principle. It's all good. All the buttons are going to get pressed and no one knows what's going to happen. It's the same thing. You only have yourselves to blame. Um it's not my fault. Um, yeah, so I'm just I'm just excited. I've got no idea what we're talking about today, other than we are here to save the nation and the world money. We're going to be saving God. you. I, I can't. Just, I'm going to be saving Don't you say millions. millions. We ain't got millions, millions to save mate. today. If you're like one of these people who live in like I don't know, only ways Essex, you should be listening. I'm going to be saving you millions now out of your pocket because. We've got so many top tips on how running is going to save you loads of money. We're also going to be talking about the big half, because that's this weekend. Great North Run, a little bit small. And also, mainly, I want to find out why admin is not looking forward to the big half. Because I dialed in like three minutes before we went live, by the way, just as a heads oh, up. Oh, yeah. He's Hence what a suggestion as my name. And the last thing she said was, I'm not looking forward to the big half. So I want to know why, admin. What, now? Yeah. Um. Because I think it's the worst half of the London Marathon route. Oh, that's strong. That is strong. Right, so crazy. that's we shall pick up on that later, and we will. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if you want to argue against Sabrina, then please feel free to, um, chip in. Um, Sabrina was off last week, um, but the week before, a brilliant show, mm. uh, with the girls. Um, did you enjoy it? Uh, there seems to have been plenty of good feedback, and uh, lots of people um seem to get a lot out of it. Yeah, it's been amazing, actually. What's been brilliant is um, that the conversation has continued because I think that's what's really important about this is that, yes, we're here on a Friday night and we talk about a specific topic, but that doesn't mean that the conversation starts and ends there. Um, and therefore, the comments on Facebook, people reaching out and people supporting and talking to each other has been um, has been brilliant and loads of stuff that they want to talk about in the future as well. So, um, so yeah, so we will be back. The girl gang are going to be back at some point to talk about more of that 100%. kind of thing. I thought it was it's good not... as well that a lot of the feedback came from blokes too. Lots of people yeah. were yeah. Um, talking about, um, particularly, you know, there was there was an element towards the end that blokes obviously couldn't can really contribute to. But then um, the um, main bulk of the thing was uh, taken up with uh, safety issues and things like that. I particularly found it very eye-opening about the sort of things that um, – women have to think about that don't concern me at all that I don't have to you know oh. I feel very fortunate in fact that I don't have to think about these sort of things but it was good to see men engaging in that conversation as well yeah I think that's really important it's not just about women talking about women stuff that impacts women I think it can only be improved by by men joining in that conversation and sharing their perspective as well so that there's a two-way two-way conversation happening so mm. and yeah. it was also good um but well firstly actually uh that's not a one-off, people. So anybody who thinks that that's a one-off, that's not. That's going to be a regular occurrence on this live stream podcast that the, the ladies will take over and they will do another sterling job. So that's something that's going to be more present. So keep and, coming and, in. And they'll be regular, you know, regularly. Yeah, they'll exactly. crop up right, and come so on a Friday night and just general, you know. Because anything, you 
if there's anything you want to discuss, you know, or, or you've got a question, send an email into something. What is it? We'll Long and show at gmail.com. Yeah, so there's that. So that was, yeah, um, on that. But also, I think in terms of the mental health um, episode we did last week, that also you talk about starting conversations and it continued afterwards. That's also a um, Yes, we wanted, to, powerful... I wanted to move on to that, actually, because we had um, we had um, Gary Lane with us last week to talk about mental health. And we had a, um, a message from uh, Adam Drew from the running community who, um, who had um, it'd been a competition winner, got a place in the uh, Great South Run. Um, he just dropped us a line. I, I ran this by him to see if he wanted to tell everybody, and he was happy to do so because um, he wanted to uh, bring attention to uh, what had actually happened and if it could help other people. Then uh, he was interested. There. He said, um, "I, I just wanted to say thank you for the competition win. As I meant, uh, my friend and I were planning to run together as we did last year. Unfortunately, after going missing Friday night, he took his own life, and I'm completely devastated by this." But receiving the email today was a reminder that he would have wanted me to get out there and get it done. I also want to say thank you for the recent podcast focusing on mental health. I listened while out on my long run Sunday when my head was full of worries I had reported him missing on Saturday night. Thank you for shining a light on mental health on your platform and please keep doing what you're doing. That was obviously everybody's heart goes out. So what happened to Adam and his friend and his family and all that um i think it what it does is is that it seems lots of people talk about mental health and it's a bit of a buzzword it's a bit of a phrase that people have suddenly almost become fashionable that people talk about it without talking about the absolute repercussions and this is obviously the extreme example of um, of what can happen so um we're very sorry to hear this adam thank you very much for sharing the story there and um i'm sure I speak for everybody that we send our sympathies out to him and uh, absolutely wish him absolutely. all the best. And it is something that we will um we will continue to talk about and um mm. most, not just men's mental health, women's mental health, but general in general. And um I think that's the great thing with running, it does promote the wellness uh that can be found by doing exercise, whatever shape or form that it comes in. So yeah, that's mm. that's good news. Um I quickly Gary Howland, I personally enjoyed the outro. What outro did I do last week? I can't remember it. I can't yeah. remember. Was it a song and dance number or something? So what did you I did do? The intro. I, I did the, the oh, intro. I did again, the intro. The, the outro. See, so there you go. Yeah. Oh, that'd be fair. At least I've got something to. It was better than nothing. Mm. The there bikes. was something else that I wanted to talk about before we cracked on with the big half. It's the um, the start of the run for Dan. Um, yes. Thing um, involving Rich Quinn, member of the group, great bloke. Um, in memory of his son who um, suffered a. Um, a sudden aphoric death um, when he was 25 and um, people have been um, running for him. And uh, Hayden will probably give us a bit, Hayden's on next week when we're talking about the Great North Run, he'll probably give us a bit more of a lowdown about what people were doing in Surrey last week. Um, they're going from uh, sort of like running from different defibrillators around their local area and um, highlighting where they are and all that sort of thing. Something that was brought to light in our neck of the woods this week because um, there was a young lad, I think he was about 24, who was uh, playing football for one of our local non-league teams, Hartford Town, and he collapsed just after half time, and he was saved. His life was saved by a defibrillator last Saturday at a game. So these things are so vital, and um, we'd just like to ra raise awareness as much as possible and Absolutely. support our mate Rich, who's yeah. an all-round top bloke as well. Yeah, 100%. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, absolute legend. Absolute um important again subject to talk about um where those defibrillators are and 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 the use of them so it's, it is it is critical um i what way have you in i've got absolutely no idea so i was answering a question what way have you in um just to give you an idea how i work the stuff comes through the post i don't look at any of it and then saturday night I might get the stuff out and then you know turn up the race day and then worry i would about have thought later. you were all over this attention to detail and all that yeah, it's just the fact is, uh, you know, I've got other things on, and um, yeah, I'll just we'll get there when we get there. But I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. So I keeps going on about it because uh, he knows what time we're off. But I'm, I'm, yeah. All I know is that I've got to be there for eight fifteen for the photo. Because well, it's a hard one this one because this is the thing with the big half. It is, it is an absolute what's it ache because. If, by the way, if you're in Mongolia, you've got no idea what we're talking about. Just ignore us for five minutes and then go and make a cup of tea. Come back. Or a, or a cup of goat's milk tea.
tea. I don't know. In Mongolia, let us know in the comments or send an email into something.com. Um, but uh, there's two white, there's two light like, bag drops. They make it really complicated. I don't know why. And they've got some over the river, some not over the river. And then you've got wave times that are spread out from like, I guess, eight till 10. It's a massive spread of waves. So trying to get people together to meet up and stuff um, for, because Hayden was really kind enough to organise this one, was it was a real pain in the bum because you're never going to be able to, you know, help everybody and get people together, right? Uh, but what he's trying to do is, is say at 8.15, because I think the bag drop closes at a certain time um, at the big half. So people have got to get there early anyway. So by doing it at 8.15, you can then go and drop your bag afterwards. But at least you can come, like, aim to get there for 8.15. Chances are the photo won't be at 8.15. It'll probably be, like, a little bit late because by the time we corral everyone up. But is then then you're going to do your bag drop afterwards. So it, it, hopefully it gives a chance for as many people to come along as possible. And then, you know, if you've got to chill out for an hour or whatever, or you've got to go, you know, run then, it, it tries to. But it is a pain in the bum. The, the big half, I think they really need to rethink the whole thing. Firstly, I think uh, London Marathon events need to get hire a load of people to answer their phone and answer people's emails that they send in. I've seen complaints, and, I, uh, and I'm also talking to one of my um, runners today uh, who's emailed them. They don't ever respond to emails. That contact form at London Marathon events is a joke. No one ever replies to that. It's an absolute disgrace that there's all these people that are running this event, and they never seem to get back to anybody within a time frame that's reasonable. So the amount of money that they're making from this virtual event, they need to hire some people so they can actually go back to people who have got genuine concerns and are anxious and nervous about that event. They need to sort that out. They also need to sort out the big half in terms of logistics because it's a pain in the bum spreading it all out over this big period of time. How comes London Landmarks, right, are able to do it how they do it? You just look at the way London Landmarks run that event. It is as smooth as anything, right? Everybody's through, job done. How comes the big half, London Marathon, it's like, it's like they've got this big thing that they have to try and over-engineer every single event they do and over-complicate. It's just How much mad. of that do you think is down to the fact that London Landmarks, you you virtually start and finish in the same place, whereas you've got two, you know, you it, it's just, just stupid. You go, you're going from um, Tower Bridge to uh, Greenwich. I mean, yeah, Tower Wolf, Hill is a very congested part it's anyway stupid. for the lorries yeah, and stupid. stuff like that, isn't it? The other thing oh, is, London Landmarks actually answer the phone because I had an issue with my number this year and I actually called them. I emailed and I got a response. Yeah. I called them twice, actually, and I had people answered the first time. I didn't have to leave a message. Yeah. There was no issue. They answered. Yeah. The answer might not have been what I wanted, but I had an answer and it was yeah. clear. So, so here's the thing. Send an email into, what is it, Wait, okay? Long and show at gmail.com. Have you have you got a complaint about London Marathon events and the way they run their show? Send us all your emails, right? I will take those emails personally and I will send them to the contact that I have, right? And I do have a contact there. And I'll send that to them because and I'll say to them, what'd you make of that, son? They'll probably completely ignore me because that's what they tend to do there. But I will take all your valid complaints and, and shows of frustration and we'll send it to them and say. What are you going to do about all that? Because honestly, I think they've got they've really got to pull their socks up. You compare the customer service from London Marathon events to any other large scale event that they need they need to sort themselves out. And the amount of money they've got as well is it's, a, it's an absolute liberty. When you think about it, how much money they're getting from that virtual uh, event again, and they can't even be bothered to reply to emails or even pick up the phone. I think it's a disgrace. Fifty thousand runners, and they can't they ain't got people to pick up the phone. But they prove it that London um, landmarks can do it. Just shows you, doesn't it? But apart from that, we're really looking forward to apart it. Apart from that, <laughs> if they want to sponsor the pod, just send an email <laughs> in to sponsor the pod at longrunshow.com. And if you want to give us free places to any of those races, we're happy to take them. Anyway, thanks for that. I don't think we've had a proper rant for a while. I like what? that. Who yeah, started me off on that rant for a while? That was good. Who st- was that? That was admin's fault, wasn't it? No, I thought you were. That was self-imposed. You just went in there two-footed. Yeah, but uh, they're getting on my nerves. They, they do. They get on my. You know, they, they restrict people how long you can run and all this sort of stuff, and they tell you what you can, you can't do what you can. Take to this and what time you got to be. Here. Well, why is it people have never done that event before? Why is it they're nervous about being told that they're going to go over the limit? What about if they're nervous about 
what time they've actually got to be there and all this sort of stuff. You know, the least you can do is respond. I, honestly, I think the other one who's the same are the Great Run. They're just as bad. The Great Run organisation, they're terrible for coming back. So what's the matter with these companies? It's because they're all run on a shoestring, I think. They're just all about profit. It's absolute liberty. But we're paying all that money to do these events. They keep putting the prices up, but they won't support us when we do these races. I go back to my point. Look at landmarks. Look how effective and efficient and well run that is. Look at the local events you do. You know, how well and organised they are. I'm just saying. I just think it's a liberty. Move on. Anyway, what don't you like about the Big R then, Sabs? I just, I don't know. Firstly, I don't know why I'm doing it again. I am... Um... I did say this to the boys the other night. They were like, because you've got a cheap place. I was like, yeah, you're right. I've got a cheap place. So that's why. Um, I just think it's, having done Landmarks, having done London Marathon, I just think the course is the worst half of the marathon course. It's <laughs> they like, don't get much love today, are they? I mean, <laughs> other than Tower Hill, which everything, not Tower Hill, Tower Brick, running over the Tower of London is like, insane isn't it because you just think yeah, it's good. you've grown up around here or not around here and you see that and then you have those moments i had it um over westminster brief with petra at the a610k and i was like god this is mad isn't it when you see things like big ben and you see mm. don't get me wrong it is incredible right being able to run on the streets of london safely is is like nothing else right but it's just a bit the course is a bit dead in places. Those cobbles aren't very nice. There's no GPS in here. Oh, oh, someone got injured on them. Was it Michael Wilkes a couple of years ago? Got injured oh, on them. Actually, quick, mate. You want to slow down? Yeah, but they, you're right. Those cobbles, they are they are a bit naughty. I remember them. Well, yeah. it can get wet. We've had a couple of wet big halves, haven't we? Yeah. But then it used to be, from the it east, yeah, weren't you? I, did, I did the first one in uh, 2018. And this is, I was in the back wave and um, Mo Farrow had done seven miles before I got over the start line. He came back the other way before he went over the, uh, over the bridge. But it was a bit, it was in, um, it was March. It was the first week in March. And the week before we'd had about a foot of snow. Yeah. I'm sure it was the beast of the east. Really, we'll and the roads were really wet. And because it's all, everything's, I suppose yeah. it changed it because it is seen as a sort of like a warm up for the marathon, isn't it? So yeah. it was because it, obviously the marathon's in October. It's and for that moved reason, to this point. and for that reason, it is brilliant, right? Because if you are running London Marathon, it gets you used to going to a bag drop, right? These are things that you don't have to do. The timings, you'll prep your fueling, traveling, um, doing bag drop, doing a big race in London, getting used to the crowds, the noise, even because in certain places like round canary wolf and stuff it's really noisy and if you're used to doing your long runs on your own in silence maybe with your headphones on or not it is a very different atmosphere well toby has to listen to chris for four hours i've got no idea what a silent long run is <laughs> <laughs> most other people that have had peaceful 18 18 18 20 mile runs i think it is really important and for that reason i really respect it and i think the fact they put it on a good time so that people can do it four weeks out from London and prepare themselves is brilliant. And they get some big names doing it. You know, yeah. Mo does it. Um, I don't know. I saw today that Ailish McColgan has uh, pulled out of the marathon. I don't know if she's pulled out on Sunday as well. She's doing you know, but, but the reason they're doing it is because of the nature of the course. But you compare it to the landmarks, which I always find, you know, it's great from a spectator point of view. You get great crowds, but it's very twisty and turny and there's hairpin yeah. ends and things like that. Whereas this is straight. Yeah, you can run a time here, right? If that is your goal, whether that, that that's a thing that you're looking to do, you can, you know, run, run a time here. There's no doubt about that. And as, as has been said, it's, it's a good warm up for the London Marathon. It also brings that, uh that inner london boroughs community vibe together which is important uh i mean i've just hammered the hell out of london marathon events but it just it does do that which is important and it is an important thing to talk about um so you know they do bring that aspect to it but i do feel like there's better half marathons around the country that you could do that are probably on this weekend as just a good a warm-up for the london marathon anyway apart from the course but like you said you're running it backwards and you're doing it over cobble so pfft. You know, go and do a half marathon somewhere else. That's that's that that's the thing for me. Um, we we're just lucky where we are that we it's relatively easy to get into London. Um, but yeah, so what about you, Tobe? Do you like it? I I liked winding someone up last year by just sending them a little video. Was it? I think I voice called some video. Called yeah, someone, some, yeah, you know? someone who couldn't uh, run because they were injured. Somebody wasn't it? there. 
Yeah, yeah, shame. Um, yeah. I, I don't mind it, Shelf. Um, I think you say parts of it are a bit boring. Um, there's not much support, but other bits are quite good. It does get you used to London. Um, I think the end's brilliant, as in the last yeah. sort of half mile, mile. There's normally a lot of crowds, a lot of noise going to cut his up. I do. That is, yeah. It's a nice finish, but but, way, but then you got to get out of Greenwich. Yes. <laughs> Go to the pub. Stay there all day. No, you don't have this- to. This is without doubt the worst race at the finish, right? I know I'm on one tonight, people, so I apologize. And I'm already getting told off from the boss, but it is the worst race. I never forget they corralled us because you finish, right? You go through Greenwich, Greenwich Park thing, these like really nice buildings, and it's all got metal fencing down the side of it. So they give you a medal, give you a t shirt from the awesome volunteers. We've got uh, volunteers there so big shout out to everybody who's volunteering from 40 runs this weekend we love you thank you we can't wait to see you and all the other volunteers that are doing that right big shout out but basically they then corral you in there and you're penned in like chickens on a hen farm waiting to cross the road over to go and get your bag it takes forever once you i remember one year we was like in a massive long queue just to get get up to the thing and then you've got to get out of Greenwich. It is an absolute joke how long it takes. It, I don't know why actually I'm doing it. Can somebody tell why am I doing this race? Why well, are you I'm doing this race? Doing it. It's Toby's what? fault, this one. Oh, it's Toby's fault. We had this conversation, all of us, me, you, Si, and said, why are we doing this? Why are we doing it? Because Toby's doing it with his mate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing he it. Did, with, he's doing it. For, it's he's nice doing of it you to come, but I didn't fall shut. Put out there. Oh. Uh, anyway, uh, my point is, is that it is the worst race. A little tip for everybody, right? Because this is the kind of guy I am tonight. I'm in such a good mood. I'm going to tell you the best tip. Firstly, don't use the bag drop. Get someone, if you can, to take your bag. If you've got a family friend or somebody who who is, if you're solo, try and take a charity hoodie or something um, that you can dump at the start. Avoid doing the bag drop. So once you get your medal... You turn and you can come out and get out of the event village and get out of that corral and get out, you know, go to the station or go to the pub, whatever it is, because that's where the that's where, it, it, you know, it can take. I'm sure I might be wrong, but I'm sure it's like 45 minutes to an hour one time to get out of there. So if you can avoid doing a bear drop this time round, I would recommend it. You know, it's not like it is in March where it is freezing cold in the morning. So if you can, you know, and the, and the stuff does go to charity, which is awesome. It just at the end of that race, it is a pain in the backside, people, to get out of there. So finish your race. They're going to give you a T-shirt. Uh, by the way, the sizes tend to be in those New Balance and a little bit too small. So, Toby, you're going to have to go extra, extra, extra large. Medium way. They, they do tend to come up a bit small. So get your T-shirt, get your medal. It will probably be some figurine of some dude that looks terrible. And then... You then leave. Just get out of there or go to the pub, right? But it is the worst place to finish unless you live south of the London, uh, South London, right? It is a nightmare. So, honestly, it's a bit of a tip. Don't try and get some if they can to take your bag. Don't give it to a stranger. But if but you can, your bag drop anyway. What? You have to go. You have to go through the bag drop because they they force you guys through to bag drop well, to then go so into is- the park around the back. You can get a little bit. You can. I won't give too much away because I'll get even more told off than I'm going to get told off. But there are little ways you can get out of there uh, if you're like you know a bit, bit you know street savvy. You just jump over things and things like that. But um, I wouldn't recommend anybody do it. So yeah, the uh, what pub are we going to, Wilco? It's a Gypsy Moth, which is right next door to the finish line. There you go, Gypsy Moth people. Everybody go to the Gypsy Moth. Right, come on, let's move on from me having a go at people. Uh, should we see? Have we had any sort of stuff from uh, from the floor? Is there any? Um... Which pub? Yeah, yeah, oh, so the question is, which pub are you going to first in South Shields on Sunday? Uh, oh, uh, oh, yeah. Let's get this uh, week's drinking out of the way first, shall we? I've just remembered. National Running Show free tickets. Use the code Forty Runs. Start Fitness. Get ten percent off. This is not. We don't get paid any money from Start Fitness. You can just use the code for the runs, get 10% off. And thanks to everybody, right? It's quite funny. Everybody who's been emailing me or messaging me saying, thanks for the code for I've just bought this. Or I just uh, uh, comment on the video. Thanks for I didn't buy these, but I bought this from start. Cheers for the 10%. You're welcome, by the way. Um, that's just me giving a bit back. So I, I hope I hope it's useful. There was some, Simon tried to talk me into buying another pair of shoes this week that I didn't need. Because he said, have you seen them on Start Fitness? They're so and then you get 10% off. <laughs> 
<laughs> even he's trying, he's hunting out bargains. So, um, yeah, big shout out to both of those. Obviously, major shout out to Sketches because we love them for sponsoring the pod. Um, but yeah, it's uh, check those two things out as well. Right, go on, let's move on. What are we going to talk about? Yeah, well, we kind of started. That's you've just given people ten percent off. That's saving them some money running, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so one way to save money being a runner is listen to this podcast, and you will get ten percent off at Start Fitness. So if you need to buy gels, or you need to buy a new pair of running shoes, you're going to get ten percent off by listening to this podcast. What a great point, Agnin. Wow. Yeah, I've got my Nova Blast three, by the way, just arrived. Yeah, uh, let me know, Pete, if they're any good. Carry on. Sorry, Agnin. No, that's all right. There is a question. Have any of you guys done the Great Manchester Half? And if so, how does it compare to the Great North Run? I've not done that. I I've been invited to do it, but I've not done it. No. I'd be interested Love to know. Detail, Jason, really? I mean, I wouldn't rule it out. No, I've I've heard some good things about that race. Um, I say they invited me up there to do it, and it clashed with another race. I can't remember which one it was, but it clashed with another race, um, and I couldn't do it. But it's meant to be a good one. Um but I'd be interested to know if anybody else has done it, whether it is a good race to do. Um, so let us know, stick it in the comments or email in whatever it is, half, what, what is it, Wilco? Long run show at oh, gmail.com. We've got to thank people, by the way, Wilco. I'll do your job for you. You're welcome. Oh, um, that's all right. I'll remember the email then. Everybody's <laughs> been emailing in about the London Marathon special that we're doing next week. We've had, well, we'll poor old Wilco, he's, you've been draining his battery on his Oh, Samsung yeah, the old cut and, and paste has time. been going mad. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, we've had quite a lot of um, there's been quite a lot of good questions come in, and thankfully, people have kept them really brief. I've been oh, really right. impressed, yeah. but they're nice little bullet points not your life story, how your training's going. We love to hear about your training, but this is not the forum for it, not the questions for the day. Nice and bright, 50 words, little bits like that, lovely. So, we've got we've got quite a few, but we'd have some oh. more, we'd love some more. So, if we you want to, um, this week. If you're out in your long run this week or you're being miserable at a big half like Chris and you, your mind drifts and you think <laughs> about the uh, London Marathon and you come up with a question, drop us a line at longrunshow at gmail.com and um, we'll try and include it next week. We've got to we'll apologise to Ben more. Bailey. Wilco, we've got to apologise. Admin's got to apologise to Ben Bailey. Why? Uh, my first ever big half. Really looking forward to it now after listening to the start of the show. <laughs> Ben, you're going to have a great time, mate. I like it. Don't it's listen totally to right, these naysayers. And, and I love this. Mongers. Have you seen this comment? Wilco, have you just checked 60% of the emails? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've checked them all to 60% of my ability. Yeah. You've got a memory. When he's saying he wants them short, that's because he's only got 60% capacity to concentrate on them. That's no, the no, only no. thing. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I was thought this week the big half was my first major. Well, John, if this is your first race as a as a V40, I expect you to win it. So I'm looking for you to place it. No pressure, mate. Um, but I'm looking for you to come in first in your age category this week. Oh, I had that when I booked um when I booked IB for it's going to be my first V50. It's like oh god. Oh, that is oh, all come on. Yeah. How do you feel about that? We'll oh, go. happy 50 of two um netty today. Oh, yeah. As well. yeah, netty big. Big 5-0, even though she doesn't look a day over 18. No. Good girl. You get out there. Yeah. She's probably, Happy she, birthday. She won't be listening to it. She'll be upside down. Like, all not, yeah, 100%. She speaks very 100%. highly of you. I love that woman. She's she's an absolute, honestly, she's an absolute legend. Seriously, <laughs> absolute legend. Really, so really. Right, so come on, let's get, let's save these people about, some money. Oh, look, hope. bang on, look. We said we was going to do it in two hours. Look, 29 minutes, 52 seconds. That cause that. It's almost, and, and hang on, everybody pause. <gasps> right, I can now, that bit okay. I'll put in the sketches ever in the middle of the podcast. Thanks for that. <laughs> 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 well, 30 minutes, isn't it? Then you can oh, just stick really? those easy. Oh, they love us. It's almost professional, isn't it? So, yes, let's talk about, let's talk money. Everyone likes talking money. Oh, and everybody oh. likes talking saving money, particularly um, right now. Yeah, yeah. Particularly now, these difficult times. You know, you can't go five minutes without hearing about how nobody's going to have any money, and like it's going to cost you twelve grand to heat your house this summer, this winter. Yeah, just in the summer, no, in the yeah. winter. Yeah. You know, and you know, it, all seriousness. You know, people. I'm sure we're all going to find ourselves, you know, cutting the cloth a little bit and trying to. Um, 
save some money. So hopefully what we would suggest is that running can um, sort of like give you a boost in this respect and help you to sort out your finances by um, in the way that you sort of direct your training over the next sort of like a few months, Chris. Yeah, it's, it's a good point, Wilco. It was it was a conversation. With, basically, the, 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 the topic came up this week. Um, really by accident because we was chatting uh, amongst ourselves about you know what we've got coming out and things because as I say we we joke but we do generally plan at least two or three minutes before we go on air um <laughs> no we was talking this week just in general just chatting amongst ourselves about cost of living blah 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 and, and you know feeling the pinch and yeah electric you know I'm going to be sitting at home in my two dry robes that I've got watching not the not the tv because I'll just be watching a blank screen so I won't want to put it on to save the money Read the I'll book. be warming my two drives. Kids can freeze, but I left me two dry robes on. Um, but we were saying that it, it, firstly, obviously, we touched on it last week. Um, with the pressure that's going to come from feeling that pinch, running will help you in terms of your mental health and maybe digesting some of that and dealing with some of that extra stress and anxiety that's going to come from it. us all feeling under pressure monetary wise. But there are other things that you know when you when you when you stop and think about it, you know, when you do have to think about stuff, you're going to cut because you, you know, you think, right, do I go to the gym every week or do I, you know, let my kids eat? Because a gym membership costs what? I've got no idea. How much a gym membership costs on average? About 40 quid a month, I reckon. 40 quid a month, right? So straight away, you can say, I'll park that 40 quid. I'll run one extra time a week. But at the same time, I'll go onto 40 Runs YouTube channel and I'll do the 20 minute hit session that's on there for free or i'll do the 30 minute yoga session that's on there for free or i'll search something else out on youtube mm. i'm just you know using those two as examples so there's stuff that you can do you know you don't have to go out and buy a set of kettlebells you can use a bag of sugar or pack of potatoes but you could do a kettlebell session that is on youtube and you could do the exercises because there's so much content online now for free that so you could save that money, but you can increase your uh, aerobic workouts by doing a little bit more running to counter some of that maybe that you can't necessarily afford. So straight away by doing some running a little bit more and doing a few bits at home, strength and conditioning, you know, using the power of YouTube and things like that, you could probably save a few quid. And then there's, we, you know, we was amongst ourselves, we were saying about the power of run commuting, who let us know in the comments, um, who run, you know, who run commutes, because that is a, a brilliant way of um, using running and staying fit, but also saving a bit of money. You know, do you, do you think to yourself, why well, is it cheaper to me to maybe you've got to drive a bit away to work, but maybe it's, you don't have to pay congestion charge. You park a little bit outside the town and then you run in, or, you know, I don't know whether it would be cheaper if you, if you're able not to get the train and you could run home, you know, as an example, you've got to be safe people. It's going to be winter. Just put that straight out there. You've got to be really safe mm -hmm. if you're doing, you know, running at night, lights. Don't be going down stupid places, you know, running along and things like that. But you could genuinely, and I'm being serious, you could genuinely save money by run commuting. You might not have thought about it, but get yourself a rucksack, you know, one that's lit up, um, yeah, Amazon, whatever. Put some lights on it, put your put your work stuff in there and run home or, or run to work. It could, it can genuinely save you money, you know, and Save petrol because petrol's, you know, it's actually cheaper to put gold in your car than it is to fill it up with diesel at the moment. You know, why not run to the post office and, and, and run the stuff down there or, you know, run to Tesco's and get a few bits, stick it in your... It sounds stupid, right? But being serious, yeah, everything's so out of control. It's going to get out of control with what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. If you actually stop and think about it, we're pretty resourceful people as runners, right? We're a bit mental. We will do stupid stuff. And, you know, you could probably save a few quid by just thinking to yourself, actually, I could probably run it or even cycle, right? Good cross training for your marathon training. Dust out the old bike, you know, get the old uh, two-wheeler out. Toby's looking like excited because I mentioned the word bike. But, you, you know, you could, get your, you, yeah, you could get your bike out. And, and if it means, you know, instead of dropping your car at the station to then commute into work, cycle there, tie it up, might be cheaper. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of if you don't want to run, whatever. This is this is the thing. The other thing I would strongly recommend is not to watch my YouTube channel because we do a lot of shoe reviews on there and you yeah. will spend money if you watch those. Just well, Gary Howland just said that, actually. 
<laughs> no, you must subscribe to the channel. Don't don't even contemplate it. I will save you millions. But no, yeah, yeah. Don't save money on, on on running shoes. Again, all right. Serious point. Look on places like eBay. Pick up shoes. Like you know, if you've got a new marathon training block and you're thinking, I ain't got two hundred quid to spend on a pair of shoes. Look on eBay, right? You can pick up some shoes. You know, mate. What if, so? What if they've done a hundred miles, right? But it is. Um, you know, you could save you could save some money by picking them up on eBay, right? If you get the right size, and you might save yourself a few quid on there. Go go down to um, Decathlon. Decathlon's brilliant, right, for buying running kit. It is all right. It's not the best made stuff, but it's not the worst. It's better than that Sports Direct to it, even though if they want to sponsor the pod, they can. But the Sports Direct stuff's terrible. It stinks after about two washes, right? It absolutely stinks of BO. You st- it's disgusting stuff because it's so cheaply made, but it is cheap. But the decathlon stuff is probably just as cheap. And it, it tends to last a little bit longer. So go, you know, you, you know, shop about. Don't go and buy the ASIC stuff or whatever that costs three grand for a, for a singlet and all this sort of stuff. Is or eighty quid or the saw. You know, don't get me started on saw stuff. How much they want for a pair of shorts? That's just daylight robbery. So you know, you could go down to. Uh, decathlon get a pair of shorts for five quid if if mm. you need to replace them um for like maybe you are into a, a marathon train but think about doing maybe local races you know it's important to stay social and stay part of connected to the running community and doing races stuff but maybe do a few local ones park runs free people yeah. don't neglect park run you may never done one because maybe you're, you've got races or something but because of the cost of races now you ain't got a fool to do it so go and do park run get involved with park run don't you think guys it's got you've got yeah i think i think it's i mean you've touched on some of this before um i think it's important if you're you know looking at i think you're more likely to sort of like succeed in this if you do little things at a time and not sort of like wake up on monday morning and say right that's it i'm going to do this 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 and this and then you try and do 10 different things to try and save you mate do one little thing at a time and find out what you like i think you can revisit the sort of lockdown mentality of being able to do things at home and you know what yeah, lockdown did bring us it made us a lot more resourceful and you know it was a terrible time but we did adapt and do things and you but don't go back to doing that i think it's really key that you should not neglect the social side that exercise brings you because many people mm. you know we get a lot of we get a lot out of going on you know it's half on a tuesday or Brooks on a wednesday or people in Hayden's group and up in the North East, Northampton, all Coventry, all the other groups, Watford, I'd have to say Watford, all the other groups, you know, you get so much out of it socially that you shouldn't neglect that. Yeah. You no, still, I think that's really, I think. Someone just made a good it. point. I don't know who it is, right? Uh, Ty, why haven't you put the link in recently? You've got a new office and you haven't done the job properly. Um, but yeah. you've got, uh, it's a good idea. Instead of driving to Park Run, like your favourite park run, if possible, find a park run that maybe is close. I know it's hard, but if there is one that you could run to, yeah. So, so we run, we run up to park run. We do it on our long runs, as I think some of you guys know. We run up to to our local park run. We're, we're blessed where we live that we've got so many close, right? But maybe you know, runs you make your long runs part of your part of park run. That's what I do. But also on Wilco's point, there's always people there. So that social side, that community connecting with people. You've got 50, 100, 200. I mean, some of them are massive, aren't they? Like Bushy's 1,000 people a week and whatever. Um, and I think you made a really good point as well about places like eBay. I mean, I know we, we joke and you do run in loads of reviews and there's loads of trainers and they're constantly coming out and they are expensive. But it's an it's an expensive habit if you think you need to buy a new pair of trainers every time one comes out. And it's also an expensive mistake if you buy a pair and they're not quite right because not every trainer suits every person I think we've all probably been burnt by that got a pair of trainers and gone oh god I've just spent 150 quid on these and they're killing me eBay like second-hand places are brilliant to to figure out what actually works for you um so I think that is a is a really good because it's a site isn't there on the Facebook group you know we've got the kit yeah. Yeah, we've got to buy and sell. Look yeah. for them. There's, 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 we've got the 40 runs one, but there's, there's other ones, mm-hmm. bigger ones that you can buy and sell running kit, running watches. Yeah, you know, if you also don't need loads of it. Like, I know that the more you run, kind of you're into it and you're doing long runs and short runs and speed work and all of that kind of stuff. And Chris, I know you, 
you've touched on this before when you've had loads of questions like how many pairs of shoes do you need but if you're running just to get out to to be out of the house and to look after yourself and to keep fit and stuff you can do it on one pair of trainers right if you're running two I'll give you an example pete who's my hero anybody who came to the event pete he's a, he's an absolute well, it's an over, it's an over two, yeah to, does two events a year got one pair of running shoes he rocks out just whatever he's got and he just does his couple of runs a week and he, he's an absolute legend. He just, you know, he's not into all this. He don't, he's doing it. To, he's trying to, he's trying to stay a bit fit, likes to get out, helps his other stuff. And, and that's it. And it keeps it simple. And it's, a, and it, it's a great bit of advice. I mean, you don't need the latest stuff. Running is effectively you putting on a pair of suitable shoes, right? Yeah. Pair of shorts if you want to, but I've seen people uh, run back in from London in jeans that I've been with, but you can go out and you can run in whatever you want yeah. and you are going to go and do some exercise that ultimately is going to make you feel better, but it's going to be good for you. You don't need Nova Blast 3 and the Garmin Epics, whatever they're on at the moment. You don't need that. It's not going to make you any faster. It's not. I'll tell you that now. You know, oh, it doesn't you, make you, any difference. Just remember oh, that. Like that. Yeah, go on, Tom. I was going to say, you got the flip side of that as well, that if you have bought those shoes and they're not quite right for you and sitting in the cupboard, you can help someone else out. So, yeah. so you're earning the money, bring that back in. You could sell them to someone else. That's mm. like the best bit of consumer advice ever. <laughs> no, but more importantly, I'm just really, no, sorry, guys, can I just interject, right? More importantly, can I just say that I've noticed that Toby's got a blue light on. Yeah, I was going to mention that, but it's I... just people on the pod. Can you email in at Toby's office at what is it? Will come long run show at gmail.com. Can you please, if you're listening to this on the podcast, I want you to watch the episode about two weeks ago when he was on, right? And then I want you to watch this week. And you tell me, it's like, where's Wally spot the different sort of thing? You've <laughs> added blue lights to the studio, haven't you, Toby? He's well, looking sharp and, light him, and well, light him and light him. Be fair, I might have raided the warehouse. Yeah, he's a hundred. I mean, I'm gonna get we, light. Yeah. We're going to see what's in the warehouse next week. We've 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 absolutely hammered him, Wilco especially, over the last six or seven months, right? We don't hammer anybody. About the state of the studio. Maybe and, he, and he's pulled it out of the bag. To be fair to Toe, Wilco, you got up your game, boy. Look at him, look. Have I? It, well, look. What? look at, he, he's, taken, he's taken your nice new flat and raised you blue lights and a bit of lighting. Well, I reckon oh, Toby's a bit of like changing room style. He could come around and do. Toby, have you had somebody living there to help you with all this? No. You Anything sure? you want to tell us, Tove? No. So, are you sure you're not preparing for any any imminent arrivals? No. <laughs> no. Okay, we'll leave that there. Email in at whatsitcalled.com if you think Toby's going to be a dad in the next few months. Oh, right, so it'll be news <laughs> <laughs> we'll know about money then. I can't believe he's got blue lighting. Um, right. So, uh, Admin, have we had any questions coming or comments? By the way, um, on this? oh, this is a great one. Trying to save some money. Don't skip past the tents in the event village. So, when you're at races, yeah. you always collect some codes there that give you ten or twenty percent off the next race, or even some equipment or some gels to try, which will save yeah. you. Oh, well, the well, Mark, or the free. Where, advice, what event was it? Where was it? It was the one admin like threw that bag at that woman and she said, I'm not having this. And she threw it on the floor in disgust about um the cost of this race and they tried to give her a free bag. But they were giving out the the hydration sachets. Yeah. I came over a bag load of them. And I think I've just finished them now. So you can save on hydration products. Mm. You know, all right, you the cost so of so the race. you could have done that if you'd have kept your bag. Yeah, if you'd have kept it instead of throwing it disparately across you, I'm not having this, all angry. You could have come home with a load of hydration. You could save millions. Well, and just asked, was that the A610K? Yes, it was. Yeah, it was the A610K. What um, do you hate more, the A610K or the big half? Yeah, that's a good question. Oh, the, the big half. The A610K route is lovely. <laughs> You're not getting much love tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the A610K is the oh, You'll be a mark woman on Sunday. Don't you? Oh, I'll tell you what. London Marathon events are going to be throwing things at us as we run past them. They're, oh, they're, they're no, hard. you, mate. I like it. And oh, I'm starting you? about three quarters of an hour after you. So you'll have taken all the, all the flags. Yeah, but the thing is, Wilco, they know who you are now because it's got Wilco on the front and I'm running at 60% on the back. You ain't going nowhere, bruv. They know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I might save that one for Newcastle. 
As uh, what's it, uh, what's this? Has Toby um has Toby forgiven you for the extra mileage to Stance to Jet when he thought he was doing sixteen miles? I hope you better answer it. No, no. <laughs> He does genuinely, right? He does genuinely check before we go and do a long run. He does ask about three times, what what are we running this week? Because he doesn't trust Yeah, but I anymore. asked you about three times that week as well. And there wasn't something. There was something not quite right. If you don't know what we're talking about, go onto the YouTube channel and watch the, the video we ran to the airport. Um, is is an all-time 40 runs classic, actually. Uh, we saw um, Simon stitch Toby up. It's nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me whatsoever. No, um, oh, no, no. Another good tip. Some manufacturers, uh, Brooks, I know we, we're not a fan of Brooks. Oh. But they do a 90-day trial period, for example, and then they offer a full refund of returns on shoes and kits uh, if you don't, if they're not, they don't suit you. So that's really good as well. I know ASICs do that on trainers. Um, no, I mean, you're missing a trick here. Oh. I've just saved the nation, the world, our global audience, millions. Yeah. Right. Okay, people, stand by. This is probably the best tip I'm ever going to give anybody. This is the best idea. Tobe, I've had a brilliant idea. We need a this graphic is, here. Top we'll this is, get the lawyers ready. We'll go get the solicitors ready. Now, <laughs> this is probably my best idea, people. Everybody, I hope you're all listening and you're about to write this down. So, oh, he's building this up. Brooks, 90 day return period, you just said. Hoka, 90 day return period. A6. 90 day return period. Nike, 90 day return period. Guess what, people? Free shoes for everybody. <laughs> what you do is you buy them, you use them for not 89 days, send them back, go to Hoka, get another pair. Use them for 89 days, send them back, get your money back, buy another pair. Just keep moving and then just keep going between the four manufacturers that offer that 90 day returns policy and you don't have to buy running shoes. Be fair, Wilco. The, the lawyers can't and then, say and yeah, If you think about that, 90 days... I'll be doing nearly a thousand kilometers in 90 that's days. Four, that, think about it, 90 days. You just keep rotating through your marathon block. You don't yeah. you don't buy shoes. You only got a stay I could do in that period and a pair of shoes. That's a pretty a bit that is I might make a video of that. I might make a video and say I didn't buy running shoes for however many days I can't work out the days. My maths is not very good. But and just keep rotating to see how long I can get away with it, right? Ooh, yeah. That's before someone notices. Days. What? That's 360 days, isn't it? So free, that's what I'm saying to you. I've just saved the world so much money. they all got free running shoes. People of the world rejoice. Send an email into something.com and say, thank you, Fordy. You've just saved me £275 on a pair of Alpha Flies, a pair of Coca Carbon Xs. Brooks, I don't think they make any running shoes that they've got car or whatever. And then um, ASICs, you're welcome. So there you go, people. That is probably the best tip I've ever given out. Free running shoes for everybody. Wilco, we you see, you're looking in despair. We if you would wear a pair of Brooks for 30 days. I think yeah, that, that is the thing. I suppose you couldn't wear them for 30 days, could you? Because you just you fall asleep with running I in them. You should. So 30 days. What? Brooks I'd only give money to charity if you wore a pair of Brooks for 90 days or 89 days before I need to be sent back. What? If you wear a pair of Brooks for 89 days, yeah. I reckon we could do a charity thing and we raise a load of money for a good cause to see Who? you in Who's going to wear them for what? You. you. Yeah, you're the only I'm shoes gonna, you What, you want me to run it, Brooks, for 89 days? Yeah. And walk the Three dog. And walk the dog. I'll do it for charity, 100%. I'll do anything for charity. All right. Watch this space. Based on that. I will wear a pair of... I will wear. I will run in a pair of Brooks. I'll run in a pair of Brooks for a year for charity. All right. If people want to donate, I'll run in a pair of Brooks for charity. I'll wear Brooks running kit head to toe. If... If you guys was if you guys will uh, donate to charity, but we've just told everyone that no one's got any money for this shit coming up. No, but all for a good cause. We'll, we'll figure that out, right? There's yeah, I'll do. I'll do. I'll run what, it for a year. What you're gonna run your mar? You're gonna run a marathon in a pair of Brooks? Yeah, if, if people raise, oh, people raise it. money, if I can do it, anyone can. All right, guys. Let's uh, what is your space <laughs> on that one? I'll be I'll be back in touch. That's I can't still do the, do the shoe reviews, by the way, but I, I will run. Oh, I will, yeah, fine, but I will run. I will, I will run in them. I will run in them in a, for a year. But yeah, I don't. You're better, but that can't. That can't be sustainable, right? Right? Seriously, right? For those companies, they. I was just going to say that's what, that, that was the grimace right. that I was saying, mate. You know, that can't uh, be right. Can't. Face. It's they not... can't be right that that's that that's that that policy is ninety. That can't be right that you can run in their stuff for free. And just go, there you go, have it back. That didn't suit me. They can't, they can't, 
There must be some clauses on it. No, I sent back a pair of Asics. Do you not remember that? After the marathon last year, because they just ruined my feet. I know Nike do, because we had the problem with the street fly. Both Tobe and I bought those shoes, right? And they both, their calves were like, going to like split. So we, we both sent those back, right? Um, and they were worn, like, but whatever. And they took them back. But that's Nike. They ain't got a care in the world. They're making so much money off of everything else. And they're making stuff for oh, about two pounds. That's it, isn't it? You know, they make so many pairs of trainers. But the thing is, is how can how can the other companies, if that's true, I, again, I don't know. We'd have to check it. How can they make it? Because otherwise, everyone should do what I've just told them to do, which is just buy so one pair of shoes. Do you only get this if you do it from directly from the company yeah. or do you do it not sort of like from all these different companies that you might buy? Yeah, so you couldn't go start fitness and do it, right? Yeah, no, you have to go direct to Brooks or Nike or uh, Asics or whoever. I suppose right. Brooks don't care because they're selling so many pairs of shoes to un unsuspecting victims when they go and get their they gate analysed. They don't care, do they? They go, oh, yeah, yeah, you'll definitely, you definitely need stability shoes. Bosh, here's a pair of Brooks. Thanks very much. Oh, you um, need nutrient, Bosh. Here you go, pair of Brooks. It's guaranteed, isn't it? Oh, the, it sounds like Mark's a bit of a pro at this. Brooks is 90 days. Knight currently 60 days. I Mark's think Hocker is 30, but you can only do Hocker four times a year. Mark's my hero. <laughs> Mark's my hero. So we, we only know, so basically, so we can only do Hocker four times a year. <laughs> that's the show. That's all I because Hoka, you know, they don't necessarily work for me. Yeah, but... don't take the mick. <laughs> Mark, yeah, can, the... can you draw up a schedule of when we need to order what for Fordy next year and when they need to be sent back? So we'll you do like a schedule yeah. for everybody in the world that when they what you'll see is ASICs will get overwhelmed in May and then <laughs> <laughs> there'll be like these big shipping problems. There'll be like ships full of ASICs coming to certain parts of the world because we've told everybody when to buy their shoes and when to send them back. <laughs> It's a really good point, though. We've just saved, we have just saved all our listeners, the 10,000 listeners that will download this tonight. We've just saved them all millions. Be fair. Well, you know, right. like that. And we That's won't get the brain of the terms and conditions, but what are you going to do about it? It's true, don't um, it? What are you going to do about it? We've got a question on a slightly different note, actually, which I do oh. want to get in because I think there could be quite a lot of this happening at the moment. So, Barsider said, Got a last minute spot for London last week, London Marathon. Uh, mm. Any advice for stepping up from a half to full marathon in five weeks? No, it's not a great idea, but might never get a chance to do a to do London again. Uh, which there is going to be a lot of places suddenly flying around where charities mm. have got people that are pulled out because they're injured and stuff. So, if you're at that distance, what's the what's the advice? Oh yeah, I mean, let's let's just just go go and do it and. Um... Do the distance, super easy. Run, walk strategy from the outset is a good idea. Maintain a really nice steady pace for like five minutes of running, then walk for like minute, minute and a half, and then get running again. You maybe shorten that up a bit on your on the walk side, but yeah. And then you know, as as you feel start feeling it in the legs a little bit later, then maybe just increase that increase that walk element of that run walk ratio. But just make sure if you're running at I don't know, easy number, ten minute miles, right? and you do that over 13 miles run it at 12 minute miles so you've got loads in the bank almost just run as slow as you can yeah and, and, and just, just have a and, great time and just soak it up enjoy it walk over tower bridge whatever it's called you know walk over that walk round cutty sark take your time walk through the drink stations you know wave to your fans get a few selfies with some people say hello to the 40 runs cheer station and and just soak it up and do it like that and go there with the expectation of i'm going to walk some of this i don't care because there's not absolutely nothing wrong with walking in a marathon far yeah. from it um but just start off really easy don't go hell for leather 13 miles just if your normal pace as an example is 10 minute miles run the first half at 12 minute miles that that well, that's that's way I do. I mean, the numbers the numbers are daunting, aren't they? When you first do, you, when you're stepping up, but you know you're doing half marathons. You've obviously got that a, a certain oh, base level of fitness. You know, you're exactly. not just getting off your sofa and rocking out and going to do it on a Sunday morning. And, and so have a bit of faith in your ability and your fitness, and um, just it, just enjoy the day. And don't try and chase miles over the next five weeks. That's a good point because you'll end up getting injured. Yeah, try and try and just you know eke out summer maybe. You've got London. How long have we got, people? Um, 
You got five weeks. It's five weeks. Yeah, so maybe you know, maybe you have a, a, a down week before London, but maybe just you know, put a little bit. Maybe do a fourteen miler, fifteen mile if you can. Uh, push it out. Try and get up maybe up to sixteen miles if you can on a, on a long run. See how that feels. But again, absolutely no pressure in terms of distance. You've got if you've got five weeks, let's say four weeks. You could even have time to push out an 18 miler. And like I say, I I said it to somebody today, break that 18 miler down, you know, run out, you know, six miles, run back, that's 12, have a drink, go, and then go again, you know, and and you know, and then you've got your 18 straight away. Or it probably doesn't add up, but you know, do you know what I'm saying? Just break it down from your from your home, you know, do three out, three back, three out, three back, three out, three back, break. You know, and you can do those sort of runs. Yes, it's not the complete time on feet, you could argue, because you've got to, you know, break a gun at a toilet and things like that. But you're still doing some form of endurance-based running. But the important thing is not to chase miles and go, oh, I've got a marathon in five weeks, I've got to go and run 20 miles. No. It's not going to make any difference. All you can do is, is ruin yourself in the next five weeks. Just slowly increment up a little bit if you can. Have a week, down week, the week before the marathon, and go in with it with a mindset of I'm just going to chill the hell out um, and enjoy it. And you will, I'm sure. Yeah. 100%. That's great. Right. Well, yeah, a little bit of business before we go off next week. I mean, we've got the big half next this week. Obviously everyone's going to be really moaning and fed up about that. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to lift the mood a little bit by talking about the, what I think is the best running weekend of the year. The Great North Run, when we're going up to Newcastle for that. Uh, That's the thing. You compare the big half to the Great North Run, right? You, it's like night and day. Think about it, Wilco. Be serious. It's like night and day, isn't it? Like, and, well, and, and there's, oh, right, there's, no the, replicate, there's no replicating the, the Great North Run anywhere in the world because it's the Great North Run. But at the same mm-hmm. time, when you compare what gets put on in Newcastle versus the big half, you know, it's literally. I mean, my, only, my to be, you know, my only experience of the big half was doing it the first year when they were all doing it and they hadn't learned anything and it was a new event. So it's a bit, I don't feel like I'm quite qualified enough to slag it off as much as other people. Oh, hang on, no, we, we provide a constructive criticism, I would say. I think we've been very fair. And oh. when the solicitor contacts you, Wilco, it was all no, it's fair your comment, idea. Mate, I'm um, I'm really excited to listen to the show next week. I've never done the Great North Run, and I want to know what is so incredible about it because that's all I keep hearing. It's going to blow your mind. You are. We'd love it. So yeah, and we've got we've got the legend that is Ian Wilson coming on. Yeah, Mister Thousand Days. Thousand Days Red. Yeah, not only that, but what he you know he's forgotten more than any. Any other of us will know about the Great North Run. He'll be able to surely answer all your questions about logistics and things like that. He's a great bloke as well. Very inspirational character. So yes. we've got him coming back on the show. So we're looking forward to that. If you've got any Great North Run questions, drop What's us a line. Longrunshow at gmail.com. And we will answer them. Thank you very much. Hayden will be with us next week. Sabrina, thank you very much for being on helping us out again tonight. Lovely to see you. Tobes back on the on the wheels and the knobs and the bits and bobs so that's great it's all been great what well, uh, <laughs> no i was about to say i just want to give another bit of love to our volunteers for sunday at the big half yeah. because despite it being what we think is going to be a pony event most of the people are actually going to enjoy it right and they have a great time but more important than anything else is we've got an incredible amount of volunteers who are going to be there handing out t-shirts and things like that so uh, as always, want to highlight them um, and give them a shout out and uh, the love. And also um, to re-emphasize that 8.15, I know it's not ideal for everybody in terms of the picture, but it's going to be there by whatever it says in the Facebook page that Hayden put up. Um, so check that out as well. Um, but don't forget, when you're there, take your pictures anyway. Take your pictures of your mates and just put, spread the love. Put it on the yeah. Facebook. Yeah. And oh, doesn't have to- we'll, be in, um, we'll be in the Gypsy Moth afterwards. I'll be there. And just My wallet to... might not be. But... I was just going to say, Mel House is sorting out a picture for the volunteers as well when they get there in the Legend. morning. Um, and as you come through the finish, just listen out for Mel's voice because then you'll know where the falls are. I think, to be honest, you'll probably hear her before the finish. Oh. I'll just say that. Yeah, now. yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, you'll be, uh, yeah, you'll be in Deptford when you hear um, Mel, I think. 
it'll be fine. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's going to be great. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks to um, our sponsors, Sketches, as well. I hope you have a great week. Um, I hope you enjoyed a big half. I'm going to enjoy it. It's going to be good, really. Don't listen to all these doom mongers. You'll have a whale of a time. If you're not coming with us to London or you're doing another event or you're just out banging out the miles for your long run, um, for your marathons, things like that, enjoy yourselves. Take care. Don't get injured. And we shall see you next week for the GNR special. I think you made a roll of titles now, Toby, on that ending. You did such a good job. 